Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be a guide to all of the settings on Farming Simulator 23. Now specifically, I will be playing on the Switch edition of the game, but this should apply to all versions of the mobile game. So in the main menu, we do have an options down here. So the first set of settings, simply just your language settings. So you can go through and you can adjust whatever language you'd like, um, and you can change that there. Uh, but that's the only setting that you're going to deal with out in the main menu. The rest are going to be in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and load into the game here. All right, now we're loaded into the game. So I'm going to go into our main menu here. Now we have a lot of different things on here but we're going to focus on the settings for this video. I will do guides to everything else. First thing we have in the settings is the time scale. So if we go back out um, of the menu, you can see up in the upper left-hand corner, time is not really moving right now. That's because it's moving at one minute per one in-game minute. So if I wanted to stay change that or speed up time, I could speed time up to two times, five times, 10 times, 30, 45, 60, or 90. So if I set it to 90 and hit back out, you can see it's already cooking along there. Now, one thing I will note as you're playing with the settings in here, Nothing is changing right now out and about, and nothing is moving in your game. The game is paused when you're in the settings menu, and you don't have to confirm any of these settings. So whatever you leave the settings at, they'll change to. So if I head back out here, there you go. You can see that that is how it, are, it is right now. Now, the next setting that you may have seen in there is the colorblind mode. So if we go into the map here, you can see everything's very colorful. Um, if we go, we go back over here and we look through here, um, a lot of different colorings on there, all that sort of stuff, lots of different colors. But if we get out of here and we go back into the settings menu here, go down to colorblind mode, if we turn that on, it's going to make it more friendly for people that are have colorblindness. So if we go back in here, now you can see the adjusted the colors. A little bit blander, but it makes it easier for them to see um, if you have colorblindness and all the crops are going to be a little bit more friendly and everything like that. So um, makes it a little bit easier for those that have colorblindness. So we're going to turn that back off. Game tips. This enables game tips. So basically, as you're running around the map doing different things, occasionally little game tips will pop up in Windows, and it'll give you those. You can turn those on or off, depending on what you want. Uh, interactive zone markers is the next setting we have right here. So those are, if we go back out here, anytime you see one of these little triggers, like this is an icon that says you can dump here. Um, there's another icon, right? There's a couple over here. There's one right there that says you can dump there. And then there's another one, or you can get stuff out, excuse me. And there's another you can get stuff out right there. So if I go into that setting and I turn that off, come back out, it's going to take away those markers. So you can see, oops, I went back into the menu. I apologize. But if I go back in here, you can see none of those markers are there. Now if I go back in there, turn them back on, easy peasy. Info trigger. So it shows info, which gives you helpful information about a different gameplay element. So an info information, if I go up to, well, let's go up to, I think you can see one on the silo here. If I walk up to the silo up in the upper left-hand corner, it's going to say your farm silo store and load grain here. So that's what it's going to tell you. Now, if I go back and I turn that off, come back out, I'm not going to get that when I come up to the farm silo. So that's what that turns on and off there at any time you have those. Continuing on traffic, that's the AI traffic. So right now, if we actually go out to a roadway here, we may see a car somewhere, theoretically. You probably won't see one now that I'm trying to look for one. They're always showing up when I don't want them, but when I want them, they're not going to show up. I will find one. Here we go. Finally, we got a car moving towards us. Sorry for the cut there. So if I go in the menu and I turn AI traffic off, head back out, the car's gone. There's no cars on the roadway. If I go back in and turn it on, um, there will be cars on the roadway again. They all reset once you do that, so they're not going to be in the same spots. But there are AI traffic that way, and it's all good to go. Go back in the settings, moving on. In-game uh, HUD scale, so I can bump this, uh, well, it's 100%, but if I wanted to back out um, and go out, you can see everything's a little bit smaller. The money's a little bit smaller, everything like that. So I go back in there and turn that up to 100, which is where I had it. You can see that everything is big again, which I like because I like to be able to see what's going on. Now you might adjust it however you like, though. Um, if we go down here, now we're into input controls. So some of these I'm not going to be able to necessarily demonstrate, but I'm going to explain what they all do in here. Um, accelerate, accelerate, accelerometer steering. Control your vehicles by using your device's sensor. Um, so that means that basically you can steer with your phone by tilting it and everything like that without having to use a control to tilt it. Horizontal tilt, same thing as your camera tilt. So... Um, your camera will tilt as your device does and such like that. Camera sensitivity, so this is how fast you are able to look around. So if I go out here right now, I'm looking around pretty fast. Pretty fast, how fast to look around. Sorry if you got dizzy there. Now if I go down and I turn this down to 50% and I go back out, I'm only turning at that speed. So you can adjust it however you want. I'm actually probably going to go for about maybe 200% right there. Steering back speed, that's how fast your vehicle is going to turn back. So we actually should be able to demonstrate this one. Believe it, 100 um, let's just get into a vehicle here. Okay, so here we go. So if I turn, you can see the wheels will turn back. I'm turning it. As soon as I let go, they turn back pretty quick. If I adjust that, that setting down to 50%, which is the lowest, see how they take a much longer to steer back. So that's what the steer back speed is. I like that to be nice and high. Steering sensitivity. If I turn this down, you saw how fast it's, it was steering before. So this is a slower, a slower steering. 
in terms of that. And if I go back in here and I turn that back up to 200, it should steer a little bit faster. It didn't look like much of a change there, but it does matter when you actually are driving around, you'll be able to notice it. Uh, now we're going to go down to the camera, which some of I won't be able to uh, show you here. Um, oh, I don't want the invert. So this is invert the Y axis. That's for your control. So if I have it inverted um, and I go back out, um, nothing is making sense to me in terms of the controls. If I go back in there um, and I change that back, things make a little bit more sense for me. So there we go. Um, dynamic field camera. The vehicle camera will try to stay horizontal with the environment. I recommend keeping that on. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Otherwise, when you're on a hill, the camera will kind of tilt as if you're on that hill versus trying to keep you horizontal with the environment around you. Uh, camera collision adjustment, I have that on right now. What that does is as I drive into the shed, for example, the camera is going to, instead of be on top of the roof, it's going to jump down to where the vehicle's at and be inside the shed. Now, if I turn that off and hop back out, it's not going to do that as much. Or at least it shouldn't. We'll see if it actually does it here. Changes it a whole lot. It didn't change it there, but that should be what that's for. That's what the camera collision adjustment is. Vehicle outdoor camera will automatically zoom in when detecting an interfering object. If you have that off, again, it's not going to completely turn it off. As you can see, it's still picking up the shed there, but it should theoretically pick it up less. And I usually turn that off because I like that a little bit better. Reset vehicle camera. So uh, what that is for, if I uh, tab over to this guy and I set my camera, let's say this is where I was at. I like to drive super zoomed out. Um, and then I go to this guy and then I go back. It's going to keep me zoomed out. But if I have that set to on... When I go back out here and I go to a different vehicle and I go back to this vehicle, it resets it back to its original state. So that drives me absolutely crazy. So I turn that off. Now, if we go down here, this is easy. It's just going to be units. So um, we have uh, kilometers, which I actually want them in miles. And we have dollars uh, for the money. So if I go back out here, you can see down there in the bottom right hand corner, it's in miles per hour. And then the money is in dollars. If I go in here to settings, I can change that to pounds. And I go out and it's now pounds up there, the pound sign. Now, the money doesn't actually change or convert, but it just changes. The symbol you have next to it, and I can also do euros. I'm going to change it back to dollars. Now, if we go to kilometers here, down there, bottom corner, it's kilometers per hour. So easy peasy. Uh, I live in the US. I'm going to change it to miles. You can do Fahrenheit for the temperature or Celsius, depending on what you want. Um, so if we go back here, if we go up to the weather, uh, right now everything's in Fahrenheit. But if I uh, go ahead and I change that to Celsius, it's going to move all of those. Oops, went out of there. Oops, there we go. So I can actually control it here. You can see all the temperatures are now in Celsius. So um, I live in the US again, so I'm going to change that to that. Acres, uh, so set the area units, the acres, the game. So hectares or acres. Uh, if I have it in acres or whatever unit you have it in, if I go into the map here and I want to uh, buy a field, it's going to tell me over on the left-hand side how many hectares it is. So 0.6 hectares versus if I come out of here and go into here and I change that to acres, go back out, hop into the map, and now has it 1.49 acres. So it converts it over to that. So that's the difference there. If we continue down in the settings, we have AI workers, all the AI worker options. So um, AI worker for fuel, seeds, fertilizer, slurry, and manure. So if we go up to fuel, I can have them buy their own fuel, which I don't recommend having them buy anything because they do charge you a premium. So it's cheaper for you to just go refill it all manually. You're going to save a lot of money doing that. But if I have that set to on, they're going to automatically refuel. If I have it set to off, they're not going to do that. Seeds, on or off, whether or not they're buying their own seeds. Again, I don't recommend doing that. Fertilizer, on or off. Slurry, buy or off. Now, if you have a option in here, like a, I think for manure, we have one manure heap, you can choose. There's two manure heaps in there. You can have it to either buy their own manure, buy their own slurry, or if there's a slurry pit or a manure heap, it'll be able to collect it from those locations or do it and refill automatically from there, which that actually is a good setting to have it set up. Um, now, if we go down here, music, I have it off usually, um, but you can have it on. Vehicle volume, you can adjust environment volume. That's like the birds and the different stuff like that and the chickens. Um, and then the GUI volume, that's the that noise you hear as I click through the settings. You can turn that up or down. Um, and then we're back up to time scale at the very top. So that is all of your settings for Farming Simulator um, 23. And hopefully that, uh, that helped you guys out a little bit in terms of figuring out how you guys want to have everything set up. But regardless of that, if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.